Ladies and gentlemen, before we get started on this episode, it's important to remember that we need to be empathetic and understanding of every single guest that I have on this show, so that way they understand that they can share the stuff without having any backlash coming from the community. I think it takes a lot of bravery for someone to come on this show and be able to tell about heart-wrenching things that occur. So please be understanding, empathetic, and supportive to my guests. If you enjoyed this content, it would really help me out if you did three things. You followed me on Twitter, you subscribed to me on YouTube, and you share out this video to any of your friends who might also enjoy this content. I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Deep Dives into the Minds of Esports. My name is Blake Panishevitz, and with me currently, I have a delightful guest who I am so happy to have on my show. He is the AD carry for Team Vitality, which plays second in the 2018 summer season, placing third in the summer playoffs, went to the 2018 League of Legends Worlds, which unfortunately probably didn't go as well as they would have liked. Um, please let me introduce Amadeo Carvalho, maybe better known as Attila. Welcome. <laughs> and I butchered your last name, didn't I? Oh, uh, those kind of kind of goodish for uh for rain to say it okay so i'm i'm really excited to have you on my show um there's lots of stuff that uh we're going to talk about and i'm really really uh very excited about this so i'm going to start you off with kind of an easy question because i think that that's uh, a fairly good way for us to get started on this you have at least one tattoo that i know of do you have more than one Oh, I have, <laughs> I have almost a full arm of this. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you count that and as besi one. And besi sleep. besides that, I have this one still. Yeah. Like, I don't know how do you count it, honestly, because like separately, I did lion first, I did tiger, then wolf, then next year I'm going to have another wolf, uh, whole arm, then I plan to do a half arm finishing like this one. <laughs> and I have some other projects, but... I believe like I have more than just two tattoos, you know, but if you can't like full sleep, then yeah, I, I will, I almost have like three quarters of sleep. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how you count a sleep, uh, cause you have to do it in parts <laughs> normally. Um, so most people who get tattoos that I know of, normally there's some significance behind a tattoo. Um, either they found it was something that they, they really attached to, or they, they like towards, I want to get tattoos. Um, unfortunately what happens is I buy guitars instead. Um, <laughs> I guess. Um, so, did, did your tattoos have any significance for you when you, when you were getting them? Because you you mentioned you got them in parts and you got different things at uh, different times. Yeah, I mean, my very first tattoo was when I was 16 years old. I did it at home, and the tattoo artist was drawing. Like that tattoo, you cannot see it because it is a cover up. <laughs> but that was my <laughs> my very first tattoo when I was just a child, you know, because mm -hmm. I was. Uh, kind of living alone ever since I'm 14 years old. Mm -hmm. So I was only living with my sister. So I had like a lot of space, free time. And I was also just like a reckless child that really doesn't think of the consequences of doing something permanent like a tattoo. So I was like, I really want to get a tattoo. So I just went for it. I, I managed to get someone to actually do it for me. Like I, I had my sister's permission because obviously I was 16, so I needed someone to to say the the good to go. And after that one, uh, it was like when it all kind of started. Like I had to do a cover up, yes or yes. Like it really awful. So <laughs> you don't want to look awful, you know. And even less if it's like half your arm. So I did like this koi fish to do that I have on my right arm. It's also looking down, uh, down because of the story of the koi fishes, you know, like that they climb the, how do you, how do you call it? Uh, second, uh, waterfalls. Yeah. They climb the waterfall of the mountain, you know, to put the eggs. And after they put the eggs, they go down and they have to swim against the, the water legit because water is always going down and they have to climb still. So that takes a lot of effort for them. So basically the story is like when they go up is that they are having a lot of effort, they are actually trying their best to achieve what they want. And when they are going down, they are happy. They already got what they want, right? Basically my coffee, that my coffee represents everything that I actually got by myself. 
all the objectives that I have gotten and will eventually get in the future. Then thing was uh, last year, yeah, last year. It, it was around this time, like November, I believe. It was before playing on GameRG. I was already qualified for the European LCS. Uh, I I did my Lion T2. So I was like, hmm, I think I want to get a Lion T2 because there was a thing that I always wanted a full sleeve. And since I started this one, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go for the left arm because it's also like I'm a writing uh, person. For example, uh, I didn't want to <laughs> have so much pain on my right arm, right? Because I was going to play gamer so I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it on my left arm. So I, I chose the left arm and then... I just lion because I'm this guy that like if you see photos of me playing, I'm half of them framing, I'm leaving it, I'm I'm really this kind of guy that just leaves out out of their his feelings and I'm kind of wild. <laughs> some some people will say alright, like I I don't really hold back my emotions, I don't really hold back what I say and that's exactly what a lion is, right? Like a lion is an animal that just really is unique on on his nature. He's considered the king of the jungle. He's feared about a lot of people. So I kind of felt like it made a lot of sense for me to have a lion on my skin. Then on the back of the lion, I have a tiger, which is pretty similar to a lion. Just that if you see a lion, <laughs> like this might be some silly, but a lion doesn't really hunt, right? Like, it's the uh, female lions that hunt. But tigers, the tigers always hunt. And <laughs> I'm someone that's always angry, you know, like, um, I've been on the <coughs> higher league of League of Legends for, like, one year. We already got, like, a, a good year, for example, like, when people ask me, how how, how has been 18, uh, 2018 for you? And I'm like, it was okay. And they're like, oh, you okay? Come on, you went to Worlds. You went towards your LCS, and I'm like, yeah, it's okay because I have a lot of goals and I have a lot of dreams, and I only accomplished one this year. And the first one was playing the LCS, and the other one is playing on the world stage. I didn't really win anything. That's really not even near good enough. I, I want more, and I will have to have more. Otherwise, I'm never going to be happy about it. So basically, the tiger is just like all the ferocity, all the all my wild side that I always have because I'm a I'm not really this logical person that stays cold all the time while playing. No, I'm literally the opposite. I'm I'm this hot temperament guy that actually just explodes after something goes good. And basically, uh, I always try my best and everything I do right. And then I also got the wolf, which is like the the newest acquisition. Like I got the yeah, wolf here, right. and I'm gonna I'm gonna have another one over here. And this one is not uh, not really because of my good sides, kind of. It's more about my other sides because I consider myself a lonely guy. I'm like I, I work in face of the public, right? I I have to be a lot with a lot of people surrounding me. Like every time I play, I play in front of hundreds or even thousands of people. And every time, like for example, I use a social media, I have thousands of people judging or reading or seeing whatever I'm doing, right? But in the end, like face to face, I'm actually a lonely guy. I consider myself a lonely wolf, right? Like I just, um, how to say it? I just like to spend my time alone. All days, like all the days, I always have like this time only for myself. I, I think it's really important for each one to have at least a little time to yourself. Like think about your stuff, think how you're doing, what do you want to do next, and I think that's what a wolf for me. I think like a wolf is really good on that, and also I have like this that. Life has probably thrown me a lot of times against the wolf, right? And instead of just getting devoured by them, I just fought against them and got myself the leader of the of the whole squad. 
the alpha. <laughs> some okay. some will call it like that. Yeah, I really like that. I don't think anyone would have ever guessed. It sounds like I, I, <laughs> I heard that, and I, there was lots of things that, um, like, I want to ask you questions on just based on that. So you mentioned that. Um, kind of the tiger is this uh, very almost like emotionally raw. You you lead out there. You 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 leap. You're very a strong figure um, that is viewed as like the king of the animal kingdom almost. Um, and you mentioned your emotions like that, being able to leap out. Um, how was that? How has that worked out for you? Being because uh, I know that I was reading on some other things, and you're kind of like a bring it person. You're the person who's always gonna lay lay it out there, um, and you're not gonna hide away from that. What has that been like for you? I'd say like when you're a person like that, it's always like a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best definition because it's something that either gets you really good stuff or really bad stuff at the same time. Like people don't really get in between, you know, like when you're uh, someone that actually just holds back uh, what you think, what you want to say and everything like that, then people just can't really have an opinion about you. So people just stay quiet and don't really have like this thing to actually talk to you, a uh, comment about you or anything. But if you're someone that just doesn't hold back, that says whatever he thinks, either if it's something really uh, neutral, like, oh, leg is a really good league. It's the best league in Europe. That's almost a fact, right? So everyone is going to agree, even, even if it's something like this, or if you say something controversial, like, for example, uh, Imagine someone on on this year said uh, before a fanatic uh, played the finals. Imagine someone said, "Well, I don't think fanatic stands a chance against IG." A lot of people have uh, have hopes about fanatic, and they actually got demolished on the finals, you know. But yeah. uh, if you will say that before the finals actually started, you'll actually get a lot of uh, people commenting about how you will possibly be a traitor for Europe, how you will not be a believer, etc., etc. So that's everything on my life, right? Like every time I do an interview, every time someone from Riot or something like this, they ask me about a player, about a certain team, I always say my honest opinion about it. And sometimes like, people just take it <laughs> personal. Sometimes people like my idea and actually understand my point of view. It's always like this, right? Mm -hmm. So when you, uh, I could see how this works for like, especially having a public opinion, but I, I could also say, cause I'm, I'm someone who really believes that you should always be honest and you should really be honest to yourself and to the others around you. But the delivery of that honesty is very important, right? Like if you yeah, don't, like there's, there's definitely a way to deliver it where it's more likely someone's going to be defensive and granted that technically shouldn't be your fault. That person should be evaluating their own perspective, but most people don't. So in a team setting, how does that work for you? Um, is that something that you've struggled with sometimes, or is it some something that? I mean, not really. I'd say I think like whenever um, I'm on the team environment, even though I'm like a person really a uh, di direct person and really frontal, I'd say I'm pretty decent at choosing my words <laughs> because okay. that's what matters in the end, right? For example, yeah. it's not the same thing if I go like I don't know to Jizuka and I say. Hey, Jizuka, I think in this game you played like shit. Or if I say, hey, Jizuka, I think in this game you can do this and this better, you know? Like, it's almost the same thing. It Just is. The, the the way that you phrase it, it's way more constructive, and the other person is going to think in a different way. So I think, like, mainly every time, like, someone has an issue is because of the way they phrase the, yeah. their opinion. Because you all also, like, for example, a lot of people don't really are respectful, right? Because you always got to first be respectful about what you say, then you're going to say your idea clearly. And after that, then you can evaluate what you said, right? But for example, if you start the conversation, like criticizing someone by <laughs> attacking him directly, then even if it's your teammate or even if it's someone that you don't know, it's not going to end up so well. Yeah, I 100% agree. That's something I wanted to clarify because that was something that I had seen. That's kind of what I figured. But I think it's good to clarify that you can still have an opinion and you can still deliver that opinion, but you can deliver it in a way that's respectful and actually promotes discussion versus something that attacks someone and just throws them down. Yeah, definitely. A lot, so, a lot of the drama is 
<laughs> is created by that, right? Like for example, the social medias, whenever there is like a big drama, it's because someone uh, <laughs> didn't phrase it that good or just attacked someone person instead of actually creating a healthy discussion, like I like to say it. Yes, I, me too. God, I, I, I like you. Uh, so I think that's something that could actually use. If we look at esports as like a whole, I think that's something that probably needs, in my opinion, needs a lot of work is us being able to sit back and actually have healthy discussions about both issues and things that we're doing right if we actually want to start to improve the scenes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think Europe has done a really big step with all this franchising thing. I think the leg thing besides a lot of the memes that are on the internet and for example some controversial teams like excel or rogue yeah i think all this is so great for europe and i'm really looking forward for the 2019 split because i think europe is actually catching up on on video production and also choose on how things have to be done because na i think they were always a step ahead of Europe. I think we only won a, a, because of the gameplay and because we had more raw talent, but now I think we, we're actually doing really good. Mm -hmm. Can't really complain about it. Uh, do you look forward to the, the franchising system? Does it offer a sense of security that you didn't have before? I mean, I always felt secure on the when I joined LCS because I'm a... I'm my number one fan myself, right? Like I really believe uh, that I'm good at what I do, mm -hmm. and I uh, know my my true value, kind of, if you can say that. So basically, I, I knew that I was going to do good. I just didn't know how good or in how much time will I do really good. So now that we did a uh, top four, top three splits with vitality, and then we we went to worlds and we did. Sort of a good, a good performance, I'd say that my value is pretty good on the scene. So I'm really not worried about it, right? Like even if, I don't know, somehow Vitality didn't want me, I, I believe like other teams will want me and they will give like a chance to just keep trying and keep competing. That's pretty much what I really love to do. And that's why I'm on the scene. So franchising didn't really give me that. What franchise me really gave me hype for the new scene, this hype for seeing how actually Europe got uh, forward because obviously each year you you really aim to do better than last year, right? So if the year that I played, I thought it was pretty good. So I'm really looking forward for the pretty good extra that they have for me. Mm -hmm. So it makes a lot of sense. So looking at like growing up <coughs> for you and the person who became, is it Amadeo? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, I'm sort of. <laughs> it was pretty good, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so I, I never you, ask for a perfect pronunciation. Like okay. even I, you like you know, I you could, you could I lived in Spain better. for twelve years, so my Portuguese accent is not the best either. So it's okay. So, so were you born in Spain then? No, I was born in Portugal. Okay, but when I was three years old, I went to Port Spain. So, like, my first language was Spanish, not even Portuguese. I only learned Portuguese as my third or fourth language. You so, speak four, four languages? I speak five, actually. Gee, like, fluently? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there is only one language I don't speak for eight years, which is Catalan, which is, you, you know, like, in Barcelona, like... Spain has some regions, and there is one region called Catalonia that has like big cities like Barcelona, Tarragona, and all this stuff. And they speak like a, a language that is a mix of languages. They, it has a little bit of Italian, French, Spanish, Portuguese even. And I understand it completely. I can read it perfectly. But since I don't speak it for about around eight years or something like this, like ever since I left Spain, I can't really, like I know some words you know, like I can remember instantly some words, I can remember some phrases, I can understand it perfectly. But every time I think about it, if I want to speak it, I start speaking French for some reason. I don't know why. But like uh, English, Spanish and Portuguese, I have really high level on all of them. Like I speak, read, uh, I write and I understand it perfectly. 
But for example, uh, French, I read it, I understand it perfectly, and writing is really hard though. <laughs> writing like the French, you know, I can write it so people understand it, but writing, for me, it's writing perfectly, no grammar mistakes, so it's really hard. And speaking, I'd say I have like a medium, kind of low-key level, because like I can, I just don't know how to conjugate the verb. You know, like the past, like it has so many forms on the verbs and it's a little bit hard and I only studied French for like one year, but I defend myself pretty, pretty good on that. Yeah, I've never felt more, uh, or I've never felt less intelligent than hearing that you speak five <laughs> fluent languages and I only I mean, know I, English. I, I don't really consider myself more intelligent because I speak five languages, but it's just... I don't know, like, if you see it, like, Portuguese, if you speak Portuguese, you're going to be able to speak Spanish, and you're going to be able to speak French, because Portuguese is a <clears throat> really hard language, really hard for it. Like, from all the languages I know, Portuguese is probably the hardest one is. has a lot of sounds, it has a lot of meanings. For example, the same word can be used in seven different uh, phrases, and it has seven different total meanings. And then after that, then it's really easy to know more languages. English is the basic one. And then yeah, I got the Catalan because I was really young. So mm. uh, really not nothing special about knowing five languages. <laughs> okay. So you were, you were born in Portugal. Why did you move? <clears throat> uh, financial issues. Okay. Like, yeah, my parents were on their own kind of, so... If we wanted a better life, they they kind of had to make a decision, and they went to Spain. Okay, so I've I've heard a lot about your sister. I haven't heard a lot about your parents. What were they like? Um, what do you mean with what they were like? Uh, <laughs> what what like, did they like, work, for example? No, no, like what were they like as people? Because you you lived with them until you were about fourteen, and then you moved oh, in with yeah? your sister, right? I mean, they left. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, they went to work to Switzerland when I was 14, but um, it's hard to say because like since my teenager age, uh, I was away with them, you know, like I, I still saw them on like vacations. They usually came two days because of my, of my birthday, because my birthday is really early on the year. It's, I, I was born in February. I'm born in January. And also on, yeah, and also on, how is it called? Uh, Christmas. Christmas times, I will see them as well. But besides that, I won't really have like this much connection with them. So it's really hard, like even nowadays, you know, like it's kind of, yeah, they are my parents. Uh, I really love them. They they were the ones raising me. They were the ones fighting. So like, you know, fighting against the life, how, how people say it, like waking up in the morning, like working their asses off for like six, eight, 10 hours if needed. Just so I will have like a, a hot plate and a book to study and then have a great future. But like, for example, nowadays, hard sometimes to have a conversation, you know, because we don't have so much in common. And I'm also like a professional player. And for example, my world, it has a lot of English stuff, you know, like even like if they want to understand my game, English, like people that I get along with, my whole team, they have. English if they want to speak with them so my parents don't really speak English so it's kind of hard for them to catch up like they for example they they support me a lot now and they see it on the Spanish uh, casters you know like because the Spanish uh, casters LVP they also cover LCS and I used to play for the Spanish division as well the Super League Orange so they know these casters are really good as well and basically they follow me by them so they understand better because Spanish they speak they were in Barcelona with me but <clears throat> overall it's just it's just hard you know like if my fa if my father asks me how has you your day been <laughs> while I'm on season I'm like oh well I woke up at 11 I played two games to warm up uh, I, I ate lunch and then I played for I don't know maybe 10 hours straight now I, I'm eating dinner, and after I'm going to play some more until I'm tired, and then I go to bed. <laughs> How has your day has been? Oh, well, I woke up at 8 a.m. in the morning. I worked my ass off. I ate lunch, worked a little bit more, and now I'm home. Oh, nice. It was really entertaining. Well, have a good day. 
that's basically right yeah. what i could say like legit my my life is not so interesting on season because we have to train a lot and yeah <laughs> if you don't want to know the specifics like <laughs> what what have you been playing what you're preparing blah 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 and those things i can't even tell because it's secret right yeah. like that i don't have that much to actually say do you wish that you had a closer relationship with your parents or is it something that you're kind of okay with now <sighs> i'm kind of okay with it mm -hmm. i'd say i'm not uh depressed or anything because yeah. i just don't have like my best friends as parents i think it's okay to keep them close but not like super close but if you tell me, for example, will I change anything so I could be closer to them? I think I will not like uh, because I'm close enough so I, I can rely on them when if I'm feeling down or if I need some ever something from them. But that's about it. I think I think that's a, a good relationship with your parents. At least maybe it's just because that's the way I was raised and that's how I figured it out on my head, but that's basically it for me. So what was uh, school like growing up? Did you switch schools a lot or were you, cause you were in Spain until. Um, yeah, I, I went to quite some schools. I, I think I went for like eight schools, eight to 10 schools because I, I just had to run. Uh, I switched a lot of places. Like uh, I've studied in Spain, Portugal, Switzerland and no, I, I think I never studied in France, but from those places, I always moved around. So, for example, in Portugal, I studied in two schools. In Spain, I studied in like four to five schools. Then in Switzerland, I studied in two schools. So, I, obviously, I was always moving around. So, for example, if you ask me right now, I don't really have like a close friend from college or from, from school because I just didn't have the time for that, right? Like, the most time that I spent, it was in Spain. And I was just a little kid. I was, um, I was, what, 8 to 12 or 8 to 14. So at those times, you don't really get, like, this special connection that you have with someone, right? You just play outside uh, when you don't have uh, classes and then you play some football and that's about it. Mm -hmm. So... Moving around schools, um, one of the things that, especially in the States, gets brought up a lot is bullying. Um, and I know that when I had a meeting <coughs> on the show, actually, uh, he talked about some of the bullying that he went through. What was it like swapping through schools? Because if you never really got to make friends, were you just someone who was always alone? Were you someone who got picked on? What was that like? Um, in Spain, when I was a little kid, I got bullied quite a lot because, like, before, um, Spanish people were a little bit racist with foreigners. Like, at least that's what I felt like on school, right? Because I was getting bullied by that. Just like, I spoke perfectly Spanish, but once they knew I was not Spanish, I was Portuguese, then sometimes a lot of times I will get like in fights or into troubles just oh, because look at this Portuguese guy, right? Like, that was the, their excuse. Like, kid, you know how kids are sometimes with those things. But besides that, I never really got to anything like this because uh besides like i like to be alone myself like uh one day i just stood up i started fighting back and after that nobody ever touched me ever again mm -hmm. and after that i even like reversed my personality because before i was an introvert i will never try to uh to be the center of the attention i will always keep my mouth shut, be on my on my corner, not like talk to anybody. And after that, after I started fighting back, I was like, why am I holding back myself? Why, why am I not being myself? Why am I not enjoying this? So I just started to not care too much about what other people thought or, or talked about me. So I just started to speak up. I started to get surrounded by a lot of people. And for example, on in Portugal, even when I was like uh, older, when I was alone already with my sister, I I used to be like, I guess you say, the popular guy on school. A lot of mm -hmm. people knew me. All this stuff. 
Mm-hmm. And that's kind of like the start of that, <clears throat> that that line persona that you kind of you mentioned with your tattoo, even like that. That is that sounds like the start of yeah, when you... kind of. <laughs> it's kind of the start when you choose, you know, like when life gives you so much that you're like, okay, this is it. This is this is my limit. You're not fucking with me ever again. So just start not letting anyone step on you. That's really powerful. So, when you were 14, that's when you moved in with your sister? Uh, sorry? When you were 14, that's when you moved in with your sister? Uh, I mean, I was already with my sister. Like, we were in Portugal. Uh, but I didn't really move to my sister. Like, just my parents moved out. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, how, old, how much older is your sister than you? My sister is six years older than me. Okay. Okay, so she would have been right around, what, 20 then at the time? Uh, yeah, around it. Okay. What was that like when your parents left for you? Hmm. Because at for, first I, I thought it was cool. <laughs> I was. Oh, that makes I sense. A, that makes I sense. Mean, You're fourteen. When they left, when they left, I was like thirteen to fourteen. I also, I, I think, if I'm not wrong, I was like I, almost fourteen. You know, because yeah. of this thing of I, I, I do my years. My birthday is really early in the year, so. Uh. I was almost 14 and I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Um, I'm going to have the house for myself. I can party a lot with my friends. I can just, you know, like do the craziest parties, blah, blah, blah. But then I realized it wasn't <laughs> like that, right? And I was kind of new because if I'm not wrong, when it was uh, six months after we moved to Portugal, so I was the new guy there as well. So it was a little bit like... Uh, uh, a cocktail of feelings, I'd say. Like I was like happy for some reasons, and then sad for others, and then I was kind of sad because my sister was really uh, down for that. Because my sister was is a little bit the opposite of me. She's really, really close with my parents, and basically, when my parents left, and uh, lost a lot of of the support that they had. Like you know, you can call your parents every day, but it's not the same as if you have them face to face. So my sister kind of fell down for that. And my sister <laughs> had to go to college. She got married when she was 20. And then basically she had to be my father and my sister and my mother and my sister at the same time, right? Because I needed some education. I'm a 14 years old guy. I'm, I'm on this rebel zone where I want to do whatever I want. And I don't really care about the world. And I'm going to eat everything, right? But it doesn't really like it. That that sounds very conflicting. Oh, I I couldn't have, I couldn't imagine it. Like, uh, so my parents actually divorced when I was very young. So I would I would swap back and forth between houses uh, mm-hmm. a lot. And I can't imagine like not having either one of them growing up. And I I, I could see the moments where me being fourteen, I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna play video games all the time. This is gonna be great. Uh, but I, I mean, see. it was when I started playing League of Legends as well. Oh, was it when they left? Yeah. Uh, it, I never played a, a PC game ever, and when they left and when I was alone, I, it was when I started playing League of Legends. So, it was when I started actually playing more and more and more. Yeah, actually, it's funny when I have uh, a lot of guests on the show, uh, especially players. Uh, there's normally an age like ever. So whenever someone asks like, "How did you get into video games?" You always get this really kind of silly answer of like, "When I've always enjoyed video games. When I was six, I started playing that." And that is not the point that you really like. Your path has been decided because everyone at six, like, loves and wants to play video games. But you mentioned like 14. That's when you really got into it and you started to play more and more and more. And the the time commitment that you dedicated significantly increases. And actually, I think almost every single player who I've talked to, it's somewhere between an age of 12 and like 17 that something happens where they start playing a significant more amount of time. So it's it's something cool that I've uh, kind of noticed uh, with actually a lot of players is that there's there's always some point between that age group. That kind of helps to, I would say, lead into your professional career. I'm sure there are people who are not professionals too, but so far, uh, I think every player who've had on this show has said something very similar that there's an age between there where they got into it. Yeah, I mean, I started when I was six years old, right? Yeah, 
that was it. That wasn't really. really <laughs> nah, I'm sorry. The, the 14th. I'm, I'm kidding. Sense, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think when I really started, it's. Um, I'd say a lot. I'm not so sure about the age, honestly, but I think between 10, 12, because I was a PlayStation 4 guy. When PlayStation 4 got released, I loved it. I always played console before, you know, I used to play a lot of PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, Dreamcast, PlayStation 1. I played all these consoles, you know. So when PlayStation 4 got released, I was really happy. I, I used to play a lot in summer mainly because I will not go on vacations and I will just stay home and play games all day. So like, for example, I achieved a uh, rank one on the world in two video games on PlayStation 4 when I was between 10 to 12 years old. Right. One of the games was Resident Evil 5. <laughs> I always loved zombie games, shooters. So oh, my, uh, okay. my screen goes black if I don't move my PC for too long. That's okay. Um, Basically, the fir my first one was one game called Lost Planet. It was one of the very first releases on on, on the PlayStation 4 platform. And it's like a, a kind of uh, advanced war game. It was like a shooter game, and I was kind of good at it. I spent a lot of time on it. I think I spent like one, two, even three years playing it until it got boring for me. But I was really good at it. Like I started just because my father will get like beat up on online mode and he will call me to just so I will win for him and after he actually realized I was good at it, right? And then Resident Evil 5, I always loved like all Resident Evil sagas. I played like pretty much every single Resident Evil ever since I'm really little. Uh, when I was little, I was already playing zombie games. So when Resident Evil 5 got released, I, I just loved the game. I played the online version and it was like a PvP, it was two against two. And then you had zombies in between and I was really good at it. Like I still have some friends that I used to play when I was this young and they are, sometimes they just get surprised that only oh, this guy actually is a professional player. I knew you were good when you were a kid. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of fun to talk to them uh, ever, ever, like, ever since I got into the LCS and all these. Pro, pro lifestyle and after that just i got my first pc game and my first pc game was league of legends and i'm like holy i i i really like this game. like something really different i never played on pc but i want to get used to it and i just started playing more and more and i believe season two i was like 1.9 elo and i was already getting 2.2k, which was, uh, I believe, Diamond, which was the highest uh, back then. Like, there was no challenger. No. Then season three, I was always really high. I I was really young as well, but who cares on the about the age on that, on that period of time? And then after that, I, I've been always challenger and really high heel. And I just competed uh, on the Portuguese league. I think it was a little bit of a mistake. I think competing a little bit, it was okay, but... I should have left earlier, like I had the potential already before, but it's okay because nowadays I'm happy with the position I am, but I feel a little bit like I wasted a little bit of time because I was too friendly with some players and I would just stay on the team because they were my friend, or at least I thought so. And I just didn't really exploit my my ability to actually be good at the game. Mm -hmm. So now you kind of look at it more as uh, it's not like having people that uh, obviously work hard and are in a good side is obviously good, but it's more about you and it's your job. I mean, functionally. So you kind of look at it as I need to do what's best for me from now on. Yeah. I mean, sometimes people get it too personal, you know, like I, I, I never got benched, but for example, I already voted to replace someone that I will consider, for example, my colleague on real life, you know, but work is work and friendship is friendship. Like there are two separate things. And for example, if, if you're not good enough and if you are actually want to achieve greatness, then you got to do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm so sorry if like, for example, a friend of mine is on my team and he is really close to me, but if he's not performing, then 
if replacing him is the best thing you can do so the team moves forward then i'll be the first one doing it you know like i have this thing that i always said if i if i will ever hold the team back i will be the first one saying i think i should step up or i should step down if i couldn't be myself stepping up so i will have no issue at all on leaving a team or asking for a replacement if i see that myself that i'm holding someone back because what matters the most for me is winning everything and being good at the game so do you think that a person's ability is this is something that gets brought up you hear talent all the time or like natural talent um do you think that people can work hard and achieve things more or do you think that there is a level of you're not going to be able to grow past this I, I I don't believe in natural mm. talent really. I think natural talent might exist a little bit, but generally I've never met someone who's gotten very good without putting an extreme amount of hours comparative to other people. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I believe that sometimes you have uh, natural advantages. Yeah. For example, there are just people that learn really fast, right? Mm -hmm. Like there are people that, for example, even at school, right? You'll always have this kid that will be attentive on class. And then he will study like, for example, one hour, you will study three hours and he'll have like a 20 out of 20 and you'll have like a, some, a, a 17 out of 20 and you're like, how? It's just, okay, just, you're gonna accept it, right? Like everyone has a different uh, ability to actually retain information, to actually execute it, process it, etc. <clears throat> so I believe like in, the, in those cases, people are different. Some people just learn faster, some people learn slower. It is what it is. Gotta know yourself, gotta know your limits and just work around it. But besides that, I don't believe like nobody was ever born good at playing League of Legends, for example. I don't think anyone is like, I don't see myself as a special guy, you know? Like a lot of people tell me, why are you the only Portuguese guy that got this? And I'm like, well, I'm nothing special. I have two arms, I have two hands, and I have two eyes, and that's about it, right? Everyone has that, that I know, so... If you actually have the conditions, you just gotta put the, the work into it. Like maybe I learn faster than than the media of players. Maybe maybe I I actually choose to work a lot. But for example, if I work fourteen hours a day and and I got into this, then if they want to, then they gotta put the hours onto it, and that's about it. If you if you actually put the, the work to it, if you actually put your mindset into it, which is the main reason why people don't actually succeed because they put the work, but they don't put the mindset and the right attitude. I believe that everyone is capable of doing it. But of course, whenever a fan messages and he's like, my dream is to be a pro player. And they are like, after this sentence, they're like, I'm a silver player. Ah, I just got to be straight up honest with them, right? I'm like, all right, I'm not going to be the one telling you, you cannot do it because everyone on my life almost always said you cannot be a professional player before i actually got to be an lcs player so i'm like i'm not gonna tell you you can't because you can always prove everyone wrong but if you really want to be a professional player the first thing you're gonna be good is be good individually so you gotta step it up you gotta step your game and you gotta be a really high elo mechanical player so if you ever want to be a professional player, you grind until you're master tier at least, and after that, you come talk to me. That's basically what I say to people that ask me, how can I be a professional player? And normally, I never got to answer, answer back saying, hey, I'm master, but who knows, right? It could happen. I, I, I always say people like the idea of something, but they don't actually like all of the work that goes into it. So they, they like the idea <sighs> of being a pro player, but they don't actually want to be a pro player because being a pro player has a lot more things attached to it that never get talked about. <laughs> like yeah. when I was when I was working in Overwatch, like everyone thinks it sounds great, but like it is stressful. It is long. You practice long hours. You practice six days a week. Um, your day off, you're a lot of times people are still practicing because they still want to play the game. Um, uh, and it's, that's just when they made it, like all the work that they did beforehand that no one ever gets to see or hear about was extreme. You hear about some of the hours that like, even you put in like 
uh, beforehand. You were playing League of Legends all the time from the age of 14. You didn't make it into the pro scene until you were, what, 20? Um, we qualified when I was 20, yeah. So that was six years of you playing League of Legends. <laughs> yeah. Probably almost every day or nearly every day. Like, yeah. that, that, that's, basically. That's what I mean, though, is that people <laughs> like the idea, but if you were to say, hey, listen, play six years almost every <laughs> single day, you're going to play this many hours, someone's going to be like, no, no, I think I'm good. I think I'll go to college. I think that sounds, that sounds much more pleasant. So, I, would I mean, I just think that. people are, yeah, I mean, I get a lot of people that say that nowadays. Like before, I, I got a lot of people saying, oh, playing video games for a, for a living? I wish I could do that, you know? But after, now that people actually get more, how do you say it? They get more uh, specific on what they do, uh, what they do daily or what they did to get in there. People start realizing that it's not a free job. It's not something easy. It's not always playing on big stages, having a lot of fame, having a lot of money. No, it's not always that, right? Like there comes a lot of work, even when you get in there. And there's constant work and constant stress and a lot of more uh, factors that actually might just not appeal for anyone, right? And if there is a reason why there are really few pro players is because nobody and not everybody actually wants to be this or everybody is willing to do the the effort for that. Mm -hmm. I fully agree. So with the um, LEC coming into place, how do you feel about the idea of players unions? Because you're someone who you even said it yourself. I wasn't really worried. The LEC didn't really affect uh, me as far as like my <coughs> output. I wasn't really worried about it. Um, what do you think about the idea of a players union? I think it's, first of all, very hard to implement, and there's a lot of legal issues that I could see with it, and especially looking at like the North American uh, players union that's currently going on. But do you think that that's something that you guys need? Players union? Yeah, like the idea of a collective union that the players have in order to do uh, potentially like collective bargaining related to like contracts and stuff like that. I never thought about it. <laughs> Uh, it's been brought up but, a lot of it, so. <laughs> but maybe it could be good, right? Maybe, but the thing is, it always has a, has a, a good side and a downside, right? Yeah. Like, like everything in life, but... For example, there is also another thing that a lot of people say, and it's, uh, and it's that it would be really good if salaries were public. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that. I, I'm generally <laughs> someone who does not agree with that. Um, I, I don't like, personally I don't speaking... I don't know who thinks that. I, no, it's fans who think that. Because I've never seen a pro player come out and say, yeah, I want my salary to be public. I mean, personally speaking, it's really like uh, po politics, right? Like the, the players who get the last amount they will be probably, yeah, I would like it to be public. And the players who get the same amount, they will be like, no, why will it be public, right? Mm -hmm. Because if if you did that, uh, teams and even the players will start to equally, like, start to have, like, a more equal salary. And it will be way more different because, like, as a professional player myself, I know a lot of the salaries inside, right? Because I, I got, like, inside LEC inf information and rumors and yeah. everything that only circulates around uh, our bubble, right? Because we have like this bubble of LEC, then there is the bubble outside that is the community, then that is like the even outsider that it's Reddit. That's another yeah. story. But legit, uh, like sometimes I actually hear some stuff that if people knew, I'm like, really, why? Why is this player like earning this or why is this player doing this and not getting punished by it for a team? And then people get surprised when a player gets kicked, when teams don't really actually perform at their level with the level with the level on paper that they should have and all this stuff. But it's actually an amazing, <laughs> amazing world that that is inside the LEC. Yeah, I mean, I think esports in general, each side of the little bubble of each different like region as well as game, there is a lot of information in there that I, 
I don't know if transparency is necessarily the best. I think for some things, transparency is very, very good. Um, so, like, especially related to, like, player treatment and stuff like that, I, re I really think player treatment should be kind of transparent in the way players are being treated. Um, but, I mean, their public personal uh, information and stuff like that, so I, I would follow, like, salaries underneath that. Um, I, I really think it's completely up to the player, and it should be their choice whether or not they want to release it or not. So. Yeah, I mean, me personally, if they told me, <laughs> uh, public your salary, like, I never thought about it, but I don't even know if I, I wanted to or not. Like, I'm a rookie. For example, this last year I was a rookie, so I know I'm not earning, <laughs> not even close the most on the on the league, right? But, for example, I didn't really feel that I was getting scammed or anything. I think Vitality were a pretty, pretty good organization with that. I think they were, like, being really good for... For the for the three rookies that we had, like all the all the support that we actually had and all this stuff. But for example, if I were, if there was like this option, like publish your salary, <laughs> I, I don't even know if it will be good or not for me. Because honestly, I'm not someone that actually cover myself to other people, mm -hmm. and I'm really happy with what I have. You know, like I'm not happy if I have more than the other guy. I'm just happy if I had more than what I had before. Yeah. So. so it's always based on you. It's not based around other people. I think it's a really healthy mindset, generally speaking, even looking at improving is it's about how do yeah. I improve from where I was. Yeah, exactly. For example, I'm more worried next year if I'm, if I'm better than what I was last year than, for example, the best AD in LEC. Because last year, the like, for example, on Spring Split, uh, they didn't really talk about me much uh, ever since we actually reached semifinals and they were like, hey, this guy is actually pretty good at this game. And after that, in summer split, they started talking about me. Reckless even left for the whole uh, regular split. So they were like, already considering me one of the best AD carries of the region already. And like when I went to Worlds, they, they had a really strong opinion about me as well. And for example, I could perfectly be worried about should I be, should I just work myself uh, up so I can be the best ADC on Europe next year. Maybe, maybe like I could do that, but that will like create a, a roof over my head. I don't want that, so I just want to be the best that I was last year. And I'm pretty sure if I actually achieve that, I'm going to be the best ADC in Europe. But mm -hmm. one thing comes with another. But if you if you think bigger, if you think just to be better than you are yourself, I think that's way more uh, way more way more rewarding than if you think that you're going to be better than anyone else. Because like this, you just create, a, you just create like a comfort zone because whenever you reach that zone, you actually don't maintain it because you already reached your zone. Why will you, you should, you should like try hard, right? But if you actually just want to be better than what, what you were yesterday, then you're going to be better than the best because you're the best when you reach that, right? So you're going to be best, 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 and you so I keep the level there. Mm -hmm. I 100% agree with that. So one of the things I've noticed, you kind of wear, you kind of portray this outward confidence, which I think is very, very uh, wonderful. Um, I actually like to see people who are very confident in themselves. Is this who you really are? Do you like really believe in that confidence? Or is it something that's kind of like a shell to protect you from the world? And when you start to see cracks <laughs> in it, does it crumble? Not really. Like I believe, like there is, there are like some people that actually just try to be confident, but then you can see clearly how the confidence uh, breaks through them, like in important moments. But for myself, I just really fully believe on myself, my team, and the the work ethic that we have. Because I don't know, like whenever we we were at Worlds, we were already. <laughs> By the public, by the, the analysts, by almost everyone, we were already given up. We were already a dead body walking, right? And we just really didn't care. Like, we were just there. We, we knew our true potential, and we actually unleashed pretty much everything we had onto them. That's why everyone was talking about us after that, because we actually have this thing. And that's one of the main things why I really like my team, because I think pretty much everyone was pretty confident in themselves. And Confidence is, is key on League of Legends and on everything that you do in life. If you don't believe in yourself, who else is going to believe in? Truth. Right? 
It's like when when you're talking about love, like you cannot really love anyone else if you don't love yourself. So that is so true. That's actually, <laughs> I've I've actually worked with people in relationships and people who who don't actually value themselves generally do not have very successful relationships. Uh, exactly. So that is a completely true thing. Um, that's, that's something I wanted to check because you guys are probably uh, some of the most confident people that I've seen. So. Another topic that has been talked about lately has kind of been uh, mental health related to uh, teams and players and whether or not um, you should have someone brought up uh, because of uh, what happened with the Fly Club, FlyQuest, obviously, over in North America. Um, them release or uh, St. Vicious uh, resigning or being released. I'm not really sure. It, I think it was released, but... Oh, I, I saw the clip where he says that depression is bullshit and all this stuff. Yeah. So what do you think about mental health in esports and kind of some of the attitudes that have been taken with it? Uh, I mean, I think whoever says, uh, for example, mental uh, illness is just signs of weakness. I think they're delusional. That's mm -hmm. about it because it's a thing that <laughs> actually mental illness most of the times are even uh, harder to just get better than, for example, a physical illness. Like if you break your hand, you you know you just put. I, I don't know how to say it in English, but you put the white Bandage, thing around yeah, it. You the, just the yeah, you you put the cast. You just wait a couple of weeks and then you're good to go. But on the when you're for example depressed, when you have anxiety, when you have so much stress over you that your body actually doesn't function well because your bench doesn't, then that's not kind of bullshit or that's nothing messing around. That's actually. Uh, an illness, right? So it's the same with depression. Like depression is something proven scientifically, and if it's there, it's there, and you're not gonna get better if people tell you, "Well, just uh, man up." It's it's not gonna work, really. It's actually not just gonna get it worse, and that's the thing in esports that a lot of people actually go through. Like, if you see professional players with all this under the the radar, right? Everything we do. It's public almost like everything I do on social medias, everything I do, like even on real life, it can be end up interesting enough that everyone is gonna is gonna say something about it, right? Like everything I do is gonna be judged. And for example, I'm not the most famous player, not at all. Like for example, Reckless, Perks, all these like kind of big stars in Europe, everything they do is gonna be judged, everything they do is gonna be comment, everything they do is gonna be is going to have like an opinion about themselves it's really hard actually people like don't really get like this thing they think being known is something good all the time but actually being known is really really stressful you actually get a lot of stress like sometimes you want to be on your corner and you just can't at one point you're, you know like at one point you just can't for example some people use twitter to actually choose spread their feelings out but imagine a player does that yeah. imagine like a player like for example some players actually do it right like when you lose a game they actually just go on twitter and they for example they put i can't really describe how i'm feeling uh, i've been so down lately really rough for me what do most of the people do actually surprising they just tell him can you stop making excuses and play better and <laughs> That really gets gets things worse, right? Like it's really, really bad what people do on those, moments. and basically that can happen with a lot of things and little things or little things actually end up getting players' uh, mental illness, like for example depression, anxiety, and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had to worry about that when you're playing in the LAC or LCS? Um, yeah, I'd say I already have because, for example, when we started playing on the LCS Spring Split, we were 7 1. We we're considered the, the best team at that moment, but a lot of people were still tapping, right? Because we were rookies and they were like, oh, these guys are just like it, blah, 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 blah. So basically, then we had a really rough time where we lost almost every single game. We ended up in like third, fourth position on regular split when we were like clearly first by, by far. And after that, a lot of people uh, trash talk us a lot. They did a lot of Reddit comments, Twitter comments, like on every social media, basically. And even like, you know, like the casters have started asking, 
where this guy's losing so suddenly and then more people talk about it and that's like a, a snowball of actually negative th uh, thoughts and comments about you and your teammates so it's kind of harsh uh for a rookie like someone who's not used to receive such uh such comments but you know like you choose gotta get used to it like i already got more than used to it like i just don't care that much about what other people have to say about me if it's good constructive uh negative type stuff i actually hear it i actually try to learn from it you know like if they tell me oh i think you're doing this wrong like try to improve it and i actually agree that i'm gonna just use it as good value and constructive information if they just tell me oh lol you suck you should be tired and walk away like no point on actually giving in, giving any attention to those people that say those kind of stuff so over the course of getting into the LCS, you slowly grew to kind of like understand what you had to take in, what you had to, to kind of like filter what 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 is something reasonable to hear, what is not, in order to kind of avoid that emotional backlash from uh, people. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that I knew that they will never break is my confidence, right? Like, I will never allow anyone to actually tell me, you do not deserve to be there, you, you're not good enough and all these kind of uh, comments that actually, for me, that you try to break your confidence through it. Like, if you're telling someone that's been trying for so long and that actually achieved that by themselves, that they should not be on the league, then completely bullshit for me. You know, like, if you want to say that, just think about it um, twice before writing it down, because that's actually not true, and you, you don't know jack shit about it most of the time. But uh like if people actually say constructive things then i think it's more than fine like for example i actually think really have few of those and most of the times that i have one of those it's like for pro professional players friends or for example i coach or something like this but obviously not in these uh on this way of telling you right like my coach is never gonna tell me you suck at this game <laughs> Like, for example, he can tell me, oh, I think you, you can improve on this champion, on this and this, you should work on this, you should work on that, but like this, this kind of stuff, like, you just really get used to it, like, you just gotta do it, and not care too much about the, the public opinion, I believe. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, final question for you. This one's kind of easy. If you could see anyone be on the show, based on what you've got to experience so far, uh, you could see anyone on the show, uh, and they just need to be involved in esports. That's the the only criteria: so, uh, casters, uh, uh, players, coaches, analysts. If you could see anyone, who would you pick? If I go see anyone, yeah, on this show, yeah, on this show. Hmm. I mean, I will probably be a bias and say someone from League of Legends because that's, that's my, cool. my thing, right? <laughs> That's fine. that's my thing. Like I think like people who talk really good is probably Yamato Cannon. Yamato Cannon will be like my coach. He's really good at talking. He will be really good on a podcast. I think Jizuke has a great story as well to tell. And for example, I think Oslot is really really cool guy. That guy that will have a really interesting story to tell too. Okay, so you're you're picking your coach. Uh... Just, oh God, I can't. Just okay. I know a lot. I know a lot. Okay, three people. We're gonna see if that could happen. Uh, so, but I, I really want to thank you so much for coming on here and sharing your story. <laughs> it is, I think it's something that not a lot of people get to see, and I think it's, it's, I think it's beautiful and it's real. And I think that's something that we don't always get to see is what what the real person is. And I just want to thank you for coming on here and spending time uh, being on the show, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. So it's my pleasure. Okay. This has been Deep Dives in the Minds of Esports. I hope you all enjoyed the show, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, uh, Amadeo.